Good morning and welcome to the regular public workshop meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, July 2nd, 2012. At, time, at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. Motion by Mr. Holmes. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Preston. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The first item on the agenda this morning is a presentation. It's a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting and the Award for Outstanding Achievement in Popular Annual Financial Reporting for Fiscal Year 2010. Our presenter is Kelly Bush, President of the Georgia Government Finance Officers Association. Good morning. Um, as my role as President of the Georgia Government Finance Officers Association, which is the Georgia chapter of the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada. One of the things, one of my job duties is to go to different governments and to award their certificates to them. So it just makes me so proud to get to award it to my own government today. Um, the Certificate of Achievement of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting is for um, a CAFR that meets all of the GAAP standards and has gone through a review board that's comprised of public sector, academia, private sector reviewers that um, agree that it's comprehensive, that it gives a fair picture of the government and its financial standings. It has some demographic information in the back that shows where the revenue comes in, if it's all in one bucket or if it's distributed properly. And this is the sixth this is 2010. All of the governments have different fiscal years. Some of them end September 30th. Some of them are just end of December, and some of them are June, like ours. So the, the awards are always a year behind. Um, so this is the one for June 2010. And the popular annual financial report is a CAFR that is brought down to a level that the average citizen can understand. You don't have to be a CPA or an accountant. It basically just tells you where the money comes in and where the money is spent. And this is our fifth year, 2010, to win the um, popular, the achievement in popular annual financial reporting. And I can tell you, I've presented in the city of Sandersville, little bitty city. I've presented um, Chatham County to theirs. One thing that they all have in common is a dedicated staff, because both of these awards take a lot of excellent, I mean, a lot of work, hard work, and, and excellence in the, in the staff. And they also have a very supportive administration, a very supportive county manager, a very supportive board, because it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to produce these documents. So I would guess, um, Mike, do you want to come up and have your staff come up? How do you? Mike, did you want to, would you like to also say something about your staff before we get a picture with the uh, presentation? Sure. As, they, as they come up here, yes, ma'am. Um, you know, the majority of this work is done by these people coming up here right now. They are amazing. Um, we have more work and less people and we still are able to continue to you know present information to the public and to the state and federal levels that are excellence in financial reporting if you will so we, we do are, are proud of what we've been able to accomplish and we thank you guys for allowing us to uh, to continue to do this work as we are and I mean to me to me it's a win for everybody in Henry County so thank you any board member have a comment they'd like to share before we take a photograph? I'd just like Mr. to make Holden. this comment, and, and that is any time we can uh, win a state award such as this, it, it, it speaks volumes. And I know so many times, especially in, in this election cycle, we're criticized for everything that we've done and have done. But obviously in the eyes of people at the, at the state level that deal with this out of the 159 counties plus other cities throughout the state see that we've done a good job. I know there have been awards that we've won uh, with the Water Authority. We've seen them presented here. So everything that's done in this county has not been bad. And uh, just, just had to comment about that. And Kelly, congratulations for being the president.
And before we do the next presentation, I'm going to brag on Mike just for a minute because um, he has a great staff and, and they're certainly a, a valuable asset to this county. But I have to say, too, that it's funny because even this weekend I sent him an email and I wanted to know something about finances. And I think he's got all this stuff committed to his, his mind. He, to have someone that can oversee the finances of this county, to know where the money's at, to know where we're at uh, financially, and um, it, tell, it tells me that he is very diligent in what he does in the finance department, and I really appreciate having a pair of eyes like that looking out after the finances of our county. You do an exceptional job, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Moving on to the next item on our agenda, we have a discussion of new protocols on communicating property acquisition to the public. Our presenter is Julie Hoover Arts, our communications director. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, last month I gave a presentation on the property acquisitions that we have purchased since 2004. And before I get into this discussion, I do want to make two quick, very minor corrections in what I said. Um, the Jonesboro Road Park property, I said that we purchased it for $2.3 million, um, but it, it was a little bit misleading the way I said it because Henry County's contribution of that 2.3 was actually only 1.3 with McDonough's $1 million contribution. So we actually paid less than I made it sound the way I put it. And the Flip and Fire Station was actually a SPLUS 3 project, not a SPLUS 2 project. So I do want to make those corrections. Um, the Communications Department uh, since it was started in 2004. Um, it, our goal has been to help get out information about um, Board of Commissioner actions, county events, services and programs that we offer. And uh, we've, uh, you know, we accomplish that in a number of ways. And one of the chief ways we do that is through the website. And in 2011, we actually earned a Sunny Award for website transparency um, from the Sunshine Review Board uh, for having a perfect score uh, for government transparency. And we want to continue to add to that um, uh, level of transparency by offering citizens the opportunity, if they are interested, to review certain documents related to um, closing on properties. Um, so I wanted to, to put it out to you as a, as a suggestion that something we could do to increase uh, transparency and offer citizens uh, more access to information is to just put just the summary statements on our website so that people can get on and review not only how much we paid for it, but who we purchased it from. Um, so that is one suggestion that we could add to our website to provide even greater transparency. Something else that the board could consider is when you come back out following, um, you know, your discussion in executive session on the purchase of uh, property acquisitions, uh, is to come back out and ex when you go to vote on it, not only say uh, what the address is, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't currently, but to say what the address of the property is and also to say what you are purchasing it for. Um, because that, from the, from the very beginning, I think would help to promote greater understanding and uh, greater disclosure and, and, and help citizens to see, you know, that you have a reason for these properties and you have a goal in, in mind. Now, we certainly, over the years, have taken all of your information um, and we've put out press releases and we've promoted and publicized um, the vast majority of the properties that I discussed last, um, in the, at the last meeting we had publicized, we put out press releases, we put it in the newsletter, we put it on our website. So information was out there um, regarding that property. Um, but these are just two additional steps that the board could, con could consider doing to provide even greater transparency to the citizens. So I wanted to um, put that, those thoughts out there and see what your um, feedback was. I, I think um, to be able to put that information on the website would be, um, would be great. I think that way the citizens can click right on and see um, all the information that's relevant to a purchase. In addition, I think it would be good to put on there where the fund, of course, where the funding is coming from. Is it a SPLOS project? Is it impact fees? Is it a grant? Um, because I know with your presentation you did a couple of weeks ago, one of the things that you pointed out, and of course you probably need to update the total after Mr. Holder pointed out there were a couple of properties on there that over the last nine years, $60 million worth of purchases, but only six came from the general fund, which is funded by property tax, because we have all these special funds that are set aside that can only be spent 
for what these funds are designated to be spent on. It doesn't come from property taxes that we collect. So I think that information is important, too, because there's a lot of confusion about how projects are funded in the county. Um, so I would definitely like to see that. Does any board member have a, uh, some suggestions or comments that you'd like to see, Mr. Holder? I'd just like to make some comments. And, and number one, and I want uh, to defer the answer to the county attorney, but by instruction, we have always been instructed to give the legal description of the property in question, not that it belongs to John Smith at 122 Jackson Street or whatever the case might be. It's this particular parcel and landlot, so forth and so on. That's been the instruction of, by the attorney. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And the vast majority of those instances involve condemnation cases. And so we do um, articulate the land lot district number um, one because that's the more discreet reference um, but I know it's not discreet to the or open to the public as to exact address but secondly I believe um, the policy that directive that I inherited and that we have continued to utilize um, doesn't identify um, Jane Doe at 123 Main Street we're going to condemn her property um, so you know, there are other reasons on the condemnation cases. On the capital projects that we, the property that we acquire for capital purchases, if there's a physical address, that information is always in the resolution that is before you all, that is um, made a part of the website, um, postage in the item that the clerk maintains and posts on the website. So that information is always there for the capital projects when there are physical addresses. Some properties that we acquire don't have physical street addresses. You know, sometimes we buy property that has not been designated with a specific property address if there is no building on it. So. Okay, and also, this was certainly not done to make things less transparent. They, we were do, trying to deal with the letter of the law. I couldn't agree with the chairman in what you're proposing more, Julie as far as is creating transparency. I know that we get we have been criticized about coming out of executive session, voting on it. I guess the only way we could do that is if we have an executive session dealing with property that we have executive session prior to the meeting and we come back into a regular session and vote on it, on it then so that it's not at the end of the meeting when uh, no one is here. Many agencies do that. They'll hold executive session prior to a board meeting so that anything that's done can be voted on in regular session. And I certainly have no problem even with that, that arrangement. I don't think anybody here is, is trying to be less transparent, but I want people to understand this. This board is elected by the people to take care of their business. Now, if they lose confidence in the board that's sitting here, then they fire us. I think everybody knows that, you know, there's an election coming up and every one of us could be fired that's up for re-election. That's the per people's right. But every issue cannot go to the people. This county cannot operate on a committee basis to where every action that's taken is run by every citizen in the county. It just can't happen. As far as being more transparent, you're going to put it on the web. How many people are going to go on the web and look at it? Not, not some, obviously more and more each year. But that does not get to every person. There is no medium that is going to get to every person. So I don't think anybody has tried to be non-transparent. And I want to go one step further, and that's on, on some property that we purchased for the police department that the police were very in favor of and very involved in, but there are reasons that that could not be disclosed. And I want people to know that. And it wasn't a matter of trying to be uh, non-transparent and not let the people know. It's just things you don't know. Think some things have to be done in secret, and the people have to have enough confidence in whoever's sitting here to carry those duties out. And uh, it may not be this group, but whoever's sitting here is going to be faced with those kinds of responsibilities. That's all.
Anyone else with a question, comment, or suggestion of how you would like to see this move forward? Can you create a separate, um, I know on the opening page, a separate line just for property acquisition that someone could just go there without going into the minutes of a meeting that would make it easy for someone to see land purchases? Well, what we are currently considering is for it to be under the um, Board of Commissioners drop down menu, okay. a, a property acquisition, and then when you click on that, it would go to that page and it would be a summary of um, beginning. And I certainly wasn't intending to go back in time, but beginning, you know, since we are on the, the first work day of this fiscal year, so just, you know, be something that the Board would be interested in, we would from this day forward begin listing. Uh, the acquisitions and links to the supporting summary statements. Um, I don't want to confuse anyone and, and, and make them think that we were going to be putting all of the documents online because with some closings you are talking literally about hundreds and hundreds of pages and that would quickly eat up server space. So we were looking at put, posting for each property the summary statements only as well as the, the funding sources you mentioned. Okay. Add that. If there is a, an inquiry following a review of the summary, the documents after closing are always subject to Open Records Act, and we have always provided that information once an inquiry is made. So if a um, citizen has a further need for more information um, following a review of the summary, then we can, the law allows that information to be provided. Okay. And, and you may uh, need to make that statement too on on that particular page that if you would like further information pertaining to this purchase then you can con and put the contact information and how they would go about getting additional information and if they we, wanted to go a little bit deeper into it we already provide a form on the website for people to file open records requests so we could just certainly put that link up um, to that page so that they could very easily submit their request should they right. desire more information. And, and explain it too because some people may not understand what the Freedom of Information Act is so um, and may not realize that this, this um, information is available anytime that they request it. So just a simple explanation of that I think would go a long way. It's Certainly. Wrong. Okay. Anyone else with a comment on this? All right. Thank you. Moving on to judicial system, we have a discussion regarding an agreement with the Public Defender's Office. Our presenter is Kelly Bush, Court Financial Administrator. And I believe that is exhibit number two. That's correct, exhibit number two. Good morning. Good morning. Second hat. Um, every year we renew our contract with the Public Defender's Council and basically what it provides is they provide us with a public defender, um, two assistant public defenders, an investigator, and an office manager, and a paralegal, and then we provide the rest of the staff. But the way that we do that is the state, they're state employees and they're paid by the state. That's um, eight additional assistant public defenders, five additional administrative people. And then the state bills us and we pay for their salaries and their benefits plus a 5% administrative fee. So with this contract, um, our public defender, Gary Bowman, has an opening and he's about to have a second opening. And instead of filling those as state positions, we want to start transporting them over to county positions. So that number one, it gives us more control. Currently we're paying 15% into the state retirement system for these people. And if they have a 10 year vesting. So if they don't vest in 10 years, all that money just stays with the state instead of being in our retirement system. So um, this, the resolution for the contract is gonna be before you tomorrow to, to vote on. But just wanted to give you an opportunity to ask questions or discuss it and to see if you had any issues with us beginning to port these, these employees over to county employees. Does any board member have a question about this or a concern, Mr. Holder? Kelly, you just said that uh, the county's contribution to the state retirement program was 15%. Okay, I just, that number just stuck in my mind because what is the county's contribution to the county's retirement program? 8.8. 8.8, about half. The next question that I have, and I think it's important for the people to see, is the fact that 
when you add these numbers up, there's about a million dollars that uh, is come one million fifty four thousand. That would be coming from the state or from us. That's from us. From us. Okay, but in addition to that, there's another half million dollars that comes from this provided by the state. Correct. Correct. So I think it's, it's good for the people to know that there's $1.5 million that it costs for in, uh, indigent uh, defense here in this county in our court systems. So that's one and a half million, a million of which the, the state of the county pays and a half million through our own state taxes that's, funded, uh, that's funding that. So one and a half million I think is the significant number. That it, that's required for indigent defense here in this county, and I think for it's For Superior important. Court. I'm sorry? That's just for Superior and, and Juvenile Court. that's just Superior Court, yeah. And, ju and Juvenile. Mm -hmm. That's Superior and Juvenile. That doesn't include state court, it's magistrate, just, or anything else. Correct? Right. Gotcha. Mr. Stamey. Can you explain to me one more time about the 5% administration fee, the savings? How are we saving that? Well, we're only going to be saving it on the employees that, that we make county employees, all of the employees. And the reason that it was set up this way is because most um, judicial districts, circuits, most circuits are multiple county circuits. So when they had a public defender, several counties would be sharing a public defender's office. So it was easier for the state to pay all of the employees and then bill out the pro rata share to the individual counties. But we're a single county circuit. so. It just doesn't make sense that when we have to keep it this way for the current employees because they are most of them are eight years into a ten year vesting with the state retirement. Um, but as as they hit that ten year mark, I'd like to talk to them about moving them over. And certainly, as we have people leave and and bring on new people, it just makes good sense to make them county employees. Okay. We don't have to pay. We don't have to pay the five percent administrative fee on the county employees. And I think if you'll look, let me find that page. Right now, the administrative fee is $38,563.73. And the contract that I did, I did it without the two employees that are about to be. I'll have to go back and redo it if, if y'all do not want to do it this way. The contract that you have before you does not have the two vacant positions as state paid employees. It would be, and there's a there's a clause in the resolution requesting that all um, all hires after July 1st, 2012, be county employees. Any other questions or comments on this item? And this will be coming back to us tomorrow for action. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If y'all have any additional questions between now and tomorrow's meeting, if you want to uh, direct those to Kelly, I'm sure she can answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to financial services, we have a discussion regarding an agreement with Croy Engineering pertaining to capital improvements at Atlanta South Regional Airport. Our presenter is Fred Aletta, County Manager. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, this morning, I'm here to uh, present the uh, final hours and scope that was um, has been approved by the uh, by GDOT. As you know, as you're aware, the uh, we took ownership of the airport last uh, last year. Have been moving forward with various items that need to be done: environmental assessments, airport layout plans, and so on. The stage that we're in now is to get the design work done so that we can proceed to go ahead and add 1,000 feet to the runway, as well as another 25 feet of widening and an overlay on top of the 45 by 75 feet of runway that exists. Um, GDOT has, has asked that the, uh, um, the way that the um, design be done is that it's in two stages so that depending upon the number of amount of money that um, GDOT has next year, they'll be able to fund for sure the lengthening of 1,000 feet, which would be 75 by 1,000, 
and then if the full amount of funding that we felt we've been told we would get would be about $5 million per year, there's no guarantees, depending upon what the federal government does to fund um, GDOT, then we should be able to do also the 25-foot widening and the overlay of the 70, uh, 75 by 4,500-foot um, runway. The bid uh, that um, has been uh, um, given by CROI Engineering, uh, CROI was uh, approved as one of our two um, approved engineers. Um, I worked through the process with uh, GDOT, with LPA, and uh, got to a point where I ended up switching over to uh, CROI. Um, both cannot bid. Uh, uh, LPA uh, worked with GDOT as the sole uh, bidder for a scope and hours. And then at some point, I determined it was time to move to CROI, which I did. And at that point, uh, CROI was given the opportunity to submit a bid. GDOT reviewed it. In a period of eight days, um, GDOT had completed its review and concurred with the uh, scope and hours of, of CROI. That um, figure, as you'll see in here, is $217,015. There are some other expenses. One of them, they're not uh, sure what the final figure might be, but it doesn't appear to be more than in total expenses, um, more than uh, $3,000. Um, the design work is eligible for 90%. It is not eligible for an additional 5%. If you recall, when we purchased the airport, FAA was providing a 95% grant. Since we purchased the airport, FAA has changed in the uh, recent um, uh, awarding of uh, funds that it is now 90 percent, so the county is at a 10 percent. When we do the design, um, the design will be eligible for 90 percent from uh, federal and 5 percent state, so we will be at a 95 percent reimbursement for the construction of the runway. This is to get the design work done so that we can complete the design works to get the uh, bids out to the contractors and then the contractors um, uh, will put their bids in. We will get that approved by um, and a grant approved by GDOT and our anticipation through all this process is that we will have the airport uh, ex extended about a thousand feet by August 1st of next year. That is to make sure that it's in time for the um, uh, race that is in September. That gives us about 30 days of, hopefully we won't need but 30 days to, uh, just in case something should happen during that construction period. There's a uh, timeline is that the uh, design work should be done uh, by October, approved uh, during the 30 days, then turned around and put out for bid a uh, week before, week after the bid, 30 days to bid, 45 day process be completed by December 15th take it to GDOT for the grant, have that hopefully done in 45 days or less, and then start the construction February 1st and be completed in six months by August 1st. If there are any questions, I'll, I'll answer them. Does any board member have a question for the county manager on this? Mr. Stamey. Was, um, was Metro or CMS ever approached about doing the survey work out there? Metro and uh, CMS are both uh, vendors uh, subcontractors that are teamed up with uh, LPA um, during the, the process of working with GDOT on reviewing LPA's work. Um, there was no distinction made between their subcontractors. The review was done by GDOT myself of GDOT's work based on the submission, uh, based on GDOT's review. It was not geared toward or, or um, with regards to local vendors or subcontractors, uh, subcontract, it was just based on the bid or hours and scope that uh, um, LPA had submitted to, to us and GDOT for review. CROI, on the other hand, does most of this work in-house and they have a different team, although I did find out that they do use CMS from time to time. Uh, in this particular one, they did not uh, have CMS, uh, use CMS as part of their bid. Was there ever agreement that, that CROI would share services with uh, LPA? In other words, share a contract? Um, 
Metro uh, visited me, Michael Elliott uh, came to visit me, and uh, to discuss the fact that we had, I'd switched, uh, the county had switched to Croy, um, indicated that as a result, the team that he was on, LPA, therefore ended up, um, he ended up being out of the process, if you would. I did tell him I would make arrangements to uh, have him speak with Mr. Croy, or Croy uh, representatives, um, and they had their conversation. And as I understand it, they said that in future projects they would consider them. Okay. I have Mr. Croy here, and his assistant, if uh, any questions can be asked of them as well. Um, LPA ever submit a bid as well? LPA? Yeah, for this project. Yes, they were the ones that uh, provided the initial hours and scope to the county and to GDOT. It was reviewed by GDOT, and uh, LPA responded with their second proposal, if you would. Um, those, that review was not in complete um, agreement with what uh, GDOT had reviewed and asked for within that uh, review process. How did their bid compare with uh, Croy's? Um, initially, GDOT, or initially uh, LPA's uh, hours and scope and dollars were initially $342,000. Um, the second proposal was around $323,000. Um, that was it. So a little bit more expensive, is that what you're trying to say? The, as it turns out, the final, um, no, I would not have known, but until, uh, if, if I had met, not made a switch, that's where we would be, probably be less than 323 if the negotiations were to continue, have continued with LPA, okay. but would not have known Croy's bid hours or whatever uh, unless the switch was made as was done, and it turns out as it is after scrutiny and review by GDOT that the um, hours and scope and dollars, as you see in front of you, are 217 or two, approximately 220 with expenses versus the final uh, figure that we had prior to switching to Croy of around 323,000. Um, one last question. With regards to the specs, were um, specs presented to both Croy and LPA or? The um, selection of the engineers that was done by the board, I believe, back in December uh, of both um, LPA and, and Croy uh, were selected based on qualifications to put together this type of design work. Um, the extension of the runway was the project at hand. They have the FAA and GDOT knowledge and specs, and GDOT is the one then that reviewed on behalf of the county for us. Um, those uh, the scope, if you would, that they presented, scope and hours they presented to complete that work. Okay. Um, was LPA pre um, given the opportunity to uh, match uh, Croy's uh, bid? Once you switch per FAA, once you switch from your first vendor, uh, engineering firm, consultant, to the second one, you cannot go back to the first one. So uh, you cannot go back to um, in this case, LPA, and say we went to number two, Croy, their bid's $100,000 less. Would you like to match it and, and get it? You cannot do that. Okay, thanks. Mr. Preston. Mr. Lowe, the only question I have is that um, when things, because LPA was the, I went back and reviewed the notes from the December meeting. And it looked like LPA was the primary and then Croy was the backup, is that you essentially had to roll over. What, what communication was, because the thing that, we have an endangered species that's involved here, which is a small business owner here in Henry County with two companies. And, you know, I know under one Henry and other things, we've always tried to be very open to our small businesses because we want them to tell their friends that are in other counties to come here because we want more small businesses. At what point, I mean, was there a communication process with CMS and Metro to, I know you said they're just subcontractors, but was there any way when things weren't, working out with LPA that we could have involved them to say, you know, help us write this ship or help help us with going to Croy and how we transition over to that process. Was there anything that it was involved with kind of our our local businesses who I know of, you know, we, we know these people, they help us out on other projects and other things as well? Uh, as far as 
directly working with um, uh, Metro or CMS, as you indicated. Um, I had in, in the first uh, scope hours and dollars that we was already approved by the board was for the EA and the ALP. Uh, in there, there was a um, LPA in submitting their ALP had ended up with two um, persons they used to bid. Uh, one of them was um, photoscientific for the obstruction work. Their bid was much lower than LPAs, or uh, excuse me, uh, metros. Um, I was contacted and uh, uh, discussed then with um, LPA to try to use or work with a local vendor in that particular case. And at that time, uh, Metro did get their bid down significantly to then be able to get the award of the subcontracted work with LPA. Our work is with the two engineers, as I said, or the engineer at the time. So as far as directly working with them during the process, it's not what we're doing. Uh, in this particular case, after the uh, scope, if you would, was reviewed by GDOT and the ALP, and there were two vendors, and one of them GDOT had recognized as being okay to be used, i.e. photoscientific, um, Metro brought to my attention, or I heard already from LPA, we could stay local, but GDOT says you will not only get your um, grant money based on the lowest bid, which they had seen as photoscientific, so anything above that figure to go to local in that case would, it was about $30,000. The county would have to absorb 100% of that amount. So Metro did come in and got competitive, and they did get that. So as far as my dealings in that one, it was after it was somewhat um, settled as to where that uh, ALP and the subcontractors were going to go because of the involvement. In this particular case, um, on the design, the um, uh, work uh, that ALP, that uh, LPA had put together, um, which included some subcontractors of the two you referenced, everybody's referenced, that was part of their overall 323,000 second bid. And uh, as far as specifics of reviewing them or talking to the subcontractors to get LPA to reduce it in any fashion or meet uh, a request that GDOT had made in their review, I did not make that. That was, I felt, between myself and our engineering consultant, uh, LPA. And then they work with their subcontractors accordingly. The, the only thing I worry about is that we've got ourselves kind of boxed in now is because we jumped over to the second, our backup, that the wiggle room's been moved out of this to a degree. How do you get the water back up the hill? If this doesn't work out, I mean, are you saying we're out of time on, on this process? If there, part of the reason for making the switch is that we, by the design, getting the design work done to get done by October 1st and completed and ready to go put bids out by uh, November 1st to, to complete the process I indicated earlier, any slippage in that where we're ready, we were at, and it kept slipping waiting for the GDOT approval of this uh, design work. Continued slippage of that could possibly have put us in a position we may not have been able to get everything done in that process and complete by August 1st that uh, construction. One other question I had was just because um, I saw the difference in prices and it, it did look material. Was this an apples to apples, meaning did Croy get to look at what LPA's proposal was and then basically price it off so we're getting the exact same thing or is this, a, are they going about it a different road than, than what the way LPA was, that there's different services? When I moved uh, to Croy, I called Croy and said, after I talked to LPA and told them, I called Croy and said, get your bid in, and they got it in. Um, as far as a review of it, I, don't, I can't say that they did or didn't. I mean, they didn't have a copy for me to review, let's put it that way. Um, and the bid that they did submit to, to myself and then thus to, at the same time, to GDOT is the one that uh, basically you have in front of you. And GDOT's review had questions. They got back, them with, back to them with answers, and that was the, the end result. I did, as everybody knows, um, our uh, airport management firm we have a contract with is Apport. I did take um, and send Croy's proposal, hours and scope, to them and ask them to please review last week 
uh, after it was approved by GDOT. Um, they, GDOT concurred with the hours and scope, meaning their review was done to say it was in accordance with FAA and GDOT guidelines. I sent it to uh, AVPOR to review. They came up with, uh, I believe it was eight or nine items. Um, a representative of CROI and I were getting together to discuss certain parts going forward with the, the whole process and uh, knowing I need to get the board approval, bringing it today uh, for review and then tomorrow for vote, uh, I asked uh, uh, CROI the representative to have their people review it, which they did. Uh, we had a telephone conference call to review those nine, eight or nine items and um, those items were reviewed and it, to air at Fort and my satisfaction were, were answered. So, so I guess to summarize all that is that apples to apples are not, it's not the same? It is the same, yes. It, so it, it, the, the, the design the service work, is the same on yeah, both? Yeah, the design work itself, maybe I can Mr. Croy and, and representative come up. Um, the, again, GDOT's review is to make sure that the design work is in accordance with uh, FAA and GDOT requirements and that's what there. So Mr. Croy. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Jim Croy, the owner of Croy Engineering. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, it, it relates to uh, looking at, at at the other proposal and our proposal. No, we did not do that. But as far as going through the protocol and the standards of GDOT and FAA, we follow that as we have on many other airport projects that methodology to come up with the uh, adequate resources and therefore the scope and fees that you have for you today. Uh, the, the, at the end of the day, the work, the scope of the work, I would think certainly the same, but I have not reviewed any other proposal to see if the approach may be some, some differences in the approach or something. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, the design, um, uh, what was called for in the design and scope of services I would think would be the same, certainly. One, how would you be able to uh, bid $100,000 less than uh, LPA? Well, again, I can't safety. speak to LPA's bid. I can only speak to ours. And and uh, we feel from, we have experience, we, 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 we're doing work on 17 other airports throughout the state. We have experience uh, uh, in, in dealing with FAA and GDOT almost on a daily basis. Uh, that would be my only answer to that uh, and, and some approaches that we feel that uh, uh, we also have some knowledge of this airport. I have staff that work for me uh, that worked over this airport years ago. Uh, so they have some firsthand knowledge of the, of the uh, early days of the airport. Uh, and so uh, we just took a certain approach and, uh, and given the, the time of, of trying to acquire work, we feel we've got adequate resources that reflect uh, a, a, a good proposal uh, that would get you the design for both the lengthening and, and the widening, if so chose. What I, what I see is a hundred thousand dollars difference, and I think that's what everybody's focusing on today: is a hundred thousand dollars savings. And I know our DOT director is sitting here. And this is phase one. This is the design phase. You save $100,000, and I'm not saying this is the case here. I'm just saying it is a possibility because I've seen it, and I want him to, if, if I'm saying something wrong, Terry, interrupt me and say, you're wrong. On road projects, I compare this to somewhat of a, design build structure versus a spec structure. And if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong. Because I'm, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an aviation person. I'm basically nothing but a commissioner. But every road that I have ever seen us bid has been bid uh, on specs, a specified a set of plans that were specific as to what it was going to take. The question that I have, and my record's not been good with GDOT, so I'm not going to elaborate on GDOT. If, 
if we are 100,000 less in the design phase, and for whatever the reason you don't go as far as in the geotech side of it as far as finding bad soils or bad something or whatever, and on the topo you're not going in every one foot, you're going every two to four feet. My point is, what you gain in the design phase, you could lose in the construction phase, and possibly that or many times more, and you may not. I, I don't know. I'm just saying these are possibilities. We're focusing today on $100,000 savings, but that doesn't necessarily mean by the time the project is complete that you're going to save the $100,000. It may cost more money. Now, if you would respond that back to me and tell me if I'm right, wrong, or whatever, somebody. Terry? I'll, I'll put it like this. On our road projects, when we put out the design criteria for the dirt road, we, give, we get very specific about what those detailed plans look like. If we expect, and using your example, if during the process we want them to do the topo work and, and the accuracy we want it, we put that in the specifications if we want contours at one foot or two foot or whatever. So I think, and I haven't looked at these specifications I, I, I either, know. but I think there's the, the, the clue is when you put out your design criteria for this project, whatever you want, in the detail you want, you put in that specifications. Then when ever who proposes on that project, they have to meet that design criteria so as best you can you keep it apples to apples if they're all bidding on the same set in other words at the end of this thing we're going to end up with a airstrip that's a thousand foot long and x number of foot wide and they describe the area which it's going to be in then they'll describe the detail of plans all the design criteria should have been in there so when they meet it you know they meet it it would be up to it would be up to, say, Henry County staff, if one bid's $100,000 cheaper than another one, you may say, well, are you going to get the same quality of work? It would be incumbent upon the county to review those plans and make sure that we get what we ask for in those design specs. You know, and, and that's how I would approach it. This will, the process they're using is a quality-based selection, so it isn't really like a bid. Um, the way GDOT does it, you pre-qualify as the county did your vendors you go to vendor number one he proposes a price um, then they review that counter offer back and forth the, the GDOT typically does and says well I don't understand this price why is this this and they negotiate it down at some point if you feel like that they haven't given you that right price that they're still overpricing the job you have the option to go into vendor two and try to negotiate that price to what you want to, you know, with vendor two. And it sounds like that's the approach we used. Let me just, um, in AppWorks review, one of the items I brought up was along the lines of what you're talking about, uh, Commissioner Holder, and that is subject of borings, how many borings, um, and uh, a representative um, of Troy indicated that the uh, the I believe I'm reading it here 11 borings they felt were going to get the job done based on their knowledge and history and being if you would an engineer now would Mr. Corey please address that uh, particular subject as far as that part of it which I think you're you're heading down that road of is it different should there be more are we going to be in trouble after uh, the design works done and end up with more for construction costs and I was assured from uh, the Croy organization that would not be the case well, I, I believe there's there's two items here that, that you mentioned, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, you know, one has to do with uh, um, um, the the mapping or the survey work. Now, we we did we are proposing our approach is use uh, photographic mapping of the whole 400. I think it's 400 acres, give or take, uh, and 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 that is a a protocol we've used on many airports, accepted standards through. GDOT and FAA, and also on, on, on some of our highway-type jobs also. 
Uh, that's not saying everything is done off that aerial mapping. We still have ground crews, ground run survey that runs the, the runways and the critical areas and uh, locates certain issues on the airport, uh, ties down control. So all that is done with ground crews. It's not the whole project done off the aerial mapping. But, but, but we feel that, uh, again, we do that mapping in-house. We have a level of comfort. Uh, of, of our own people, uh, of knowing that the accuracy is there, and we have that real comfort level of being able to perform that work, the actual mapping in-house. The only thing we don't do is the actual flight of the airplane. Uh, so we feel the accuracy is there. Let me, let me just, uh, if I could just clarify. It was brought up um, regarding the uh, use of, uh, of, of the aerial work. It was brought up that in Croy's hours and scope, they were looking to use the county's work on the aerial. They were using that based on the fact, as approved in the previous ALP, an aerial was going to be done for obstruction and so on. They were going to use that rather than go ahead and do another one. I brought that to their to their attention. Uh, was advised that it would not be available for till mid September. Um, Croy said that uh, if that's the case, then they still got to get one. They said they would contract to get it done. They have contract to get it done, and they are not changing their, their scope hours and dollars by any price to have that done now that they've learned it will not be available till September. And that cost is not going to be added to uh, the contract. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, so, so we have a, a comfort level, certainly, that the protocol and, and, and what <clears throat> call for with, with GDOT and FAA, we meet and exceed, exceed that. Also, as it relates to the geotechnical, uh, again, with the experience of, of the folks who, who have done this work, we, we, matter of fact, we've just finished a project in Jenkins County almost the same as this, uh, you know, a thousand foot ex extension. So, you know, we're just coming off of a design project almost identical to this. Um, and, and again, we feel the geotechnical, as proposed, uh, is sufficient to meet the needs of the design that we have before you. Uh, as far as indications that future issues may come up based on uh, the design we're doing, all I can say is look at our track record. That, that's not been the track record that, that Crow Engineering has with their clients. Uh, that's not saying we know all, and, and no, no one can always make you a ironclad guarantee. But as far as we have the experience, I think, the experienced staff, uh, our track record indicates uh, that we stand by our work and we provide uh, uh, accurate uh, professional work uh, for you to move forward with your contractors. Mr. Staney. Um, Fred, I don't have my the resolution in front of me from we voted on it a few months ago, but LPA and Corey both were rated by vendors, right? They were, we had a rating system. Do you yes. know how, how the two came out in the ratings? Yes, I do. Um, the rating system, um, <clears throat> I can't tell you if it's 1 to 10 because there are some numbers that are 13 or 14 or whatever. Uh, one was rated, um, let's save this second. Um, this was the rating system that was uh, used. Um, if you take a look, the differences between the two was two points. The two areas where there was a one point difference is relevant project experience with references 30% of the total was 14 versus 13 and down under workload and performance and pass on the project 15%, eight versus nine. My understanding, it may not be totally correct, is the relevant project experience was the fact that at the present time, um, LPA was at the airport whereas Croy had been there prior to LPA coming out. So that may be the one point difference, I don't know. If you then take that into consideration, uh, the experiences of both have, having been at uh, uh, what was at the time uh, Clayton Terra um, doing what they were doing, and again, I don't know the difference between the nine and the eight down below on the workload and performance. This was done by the previous county manager uh, back in November, December, and doing this evaluation. But as you can see, they're within two points um, as shown. And you made a comment that, Corey, are you, you say you're at the airport now? I'm, I'm sorry. Fred, you said something about them, they're at the airport now, or have they been at the airport before? Well, we I'm not have, talking about the survey, and or I mean, location-wise, are y'all located there? 
No, no, sir. I, what I meant, and, and, I, and I apologize if, if I misspoke, as far as the airport, the early years of the airport, Joe Mays and, and that used to be with Mays, Seth, and Etheridge, those folks work for me now, have experience at that airport early on as far as working there. Now, we do have some crews working at the airport on, on uh, uh, again, sort of teeing up the survey work, but we recognize that anything we're doing out there right now is at risk from us until we certainly have a, a contract. Okay. Anyone else with a question or comment? Okay. And, and let me clarify to make sure I said this, this correctly, and that is as far as, and I, I've been talking with Don, and I think he's your EDP, I don't exactly, but Don had been out there prior, I guess, under some Correct. some other firm, I guess, maybe not yours. I take, I have to correct that. I thought it was uh, with Croy, but it was somebody else. I, I, I correct that. That's, that's for, well, uh, six years ago, Croy purchased uh, a company, that, that the MSE company. That's the relationship. Okay. And that company was located at Terrafield? Is that what you're saying? No, no, sir. It was. They were doing work at Terrafield, but we were. We, Croy or MSC has never been located there as a business. I don't want to give that impression. We so did work on the field. But you did acquire the company that was prior right. to that. Okay. And the personnel the, are still with and you. And the personnel are still with me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? We did have a couple of uh, individuals sign up for public comment at the end of the meeting, but since this is an agenda item, I'm going to go ahead and recognize them, although this is not the usual way we uh, typically do this, but um, we the first one is Michael Elliott of 180 Gentry Drive in McDonough, and he would like to speak about Atlanta South Regional Airport. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, thanks for hearing my concerns today. Um, just to touch base, I didn't realize I was going to get a chance to. Uh, to speak during the discussion matter. So I, I need to respond to a couple things with Mr. Aletta. And uh, yes, in the first task order, we submitted a price to Georgia DOT in the amount of $82,000, okay? The Georgia DOT requested of LPA to get a quote from PhotoScience, our competitor in Norcross, Georgia, okay? That was part of the normal negotiations that we do through task orders. The negotiations we're going through with the DOT are none different than negotiations my company currently does with the federal government through the Department of Defense with the Corps of Engineers in Jacksonville, Mobile, and Savannah. Okay? So it wasn't like I threw the county a $30,000 bone and I need to give someone a medal for allowing me to do that. That's the normal co course of, uh, that's just the normal course of negotiations that happen through this. So I just wanted to touch on that. And uh, if you'll allow me, I've, <laughs> uh, I've written a few notes on top of some key talking points that I left with many of y'all last week. I appreciate your, your quick response to that. Unfortunately, I didn't know this was going to be an agenda item until about 9.22 on Thursday night when I was informed by the county manager that two local firms were at jeopardy of losing $85,000 to this local economy. So if you'll bear with me. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Michael Hayes Elliott, Jr. I reside at 180 Gentry Drive in McDonough. I'm also the president and co-owner of Metro Engineering and Surveying Inc. located at 186 Selfridge Road in Hampton, directly adjacent to Atlanta South Regional Airport. I know many of you in this room are shocked, but actually I do own a suit. I don't have to get this back to the rental shop tonight. But actually I'm here to talk about a serious matter. I'm joined here today by my two co-owners, Mr. Stacy Lunsford and Mr. John Salter, Mr. Andrew Johnson of Construction Material Services, and Mr. Jacob Redwine, Manager of Aviation Services for LPA. Metro has been in operation since 1967 in metropolitan Atlanta. We have been located at Terra Field for 17 years. I came to work for Chester Smith, the founder of the company, two years ago, and I sat at that man's desk and I told him I was going to take care of his baby. And that's why I'm here today. I got 10 people over there that I, I feel deeply responsible to or else I wouldn't be up here. And I wouldn't be a good owner or a president if I didn't feel compelled to speak my heart today. I'm here today as a local business owner, a concerned fellow taxpayer, and an eighth generation native son of this great county. I'm not here as a sore loser, whiner, or complainer. 
I want to bring to light some concerns I have regarding the proposed procurement of surveying and engineering services related to the design of Runway 24 at Atlanta South Regional Airport. I feel it my duty to do so, and also as the custodian of, ten, of the ten-member highly skilled local labor force, the types of jobs that I've heard each one of you constantly say that you want to promote and retain. As many of you may or may not know, I'm sure you know now, my firm, along with the CMS, is part of the LPA group of Norcross, which is the primary consultant chosen by the board on 12-5-2011 for the design service related. Let me be perfectly clear, primary. Your county staff will lead you to believe that you selected co-consultants on December 5th. That's false. It's absolutely false. Watch the video, read the minutes, look at the score sheet, okay? And you got two local firms that are part of that team, not because they're locally here, because we're state qualified in the state. We're not just some fly-by-night shops that opened two years ago in this county. At that time, you chose a secondary consultant in Croy of Marietta to serve in a backup role. But let me be perfectly clear to, today. My message here tonight is to throw stones at Mr. Croy as a secondary consultant. They're a well-qualified firm and have a great reputation throughout this state. They have only been instructed of what has been done to them by the, what has been told to them to do by the county staff. My issue is with the procurement process as a whole by that said county staff. I believe many of you have seen the talking points that I sent to you late last week. I'm not going to go over those line by line. I plan to briefly and concisely describe to you the bigger picture that you haven't been made aware of and the general public deserves to hear. And unfortunately, I have to air this in public. I tried to bring this point about to the county staff last week in a face-to-face -face meeting. I was met with a stone wall. As you can see from the recommendation before you, the county staff has chosen to recommend and utilize the secondary consultant for these design services. Per my last conversation with the county manager, this is based upon time and money. I have additional information that I think you, you need to consider prior to making such an important decision. One, the county staff will lead you to believe that one of the primary reasons the, cons the primary consultant was not chosen is due in part to the amount of time it has taken to negotiate this given task order with LPA. Please understand that you as a board acquired Clayton County, from Clayton County, Atlanta South Regional on 8-22-2011. I know that for a fact because at 8-21-2011, at 8 o'clock, I'm on the phone with Smith, Graham, Bell, and Russell figuring out some title issues that they brought up. Okay? Please note that's almost been 10 months ago from present day. Please note that also a team was selected three and a half months later after the acquisition. Okay? And then the first task order that was brought to you was on May 1st, a full five months after you appointed the primary consultant. And here we are seven months after this with the design. Is it fair to blame us for all that time lapse when there has obviously been a change in leadership at the county manager's position as well as a very public display about the budget situation that we have going on here? Moreover, the DOT recommended some revisions to the original proposal LPA submitted and responded with comments to LPA and the county staff. LPA then revised the proposal in fee, which was met with some minor comments again by the DOT. This is the normal coast business. I mean, not to put him on the spot again, but Terry, you've reviewed many of my plans and looked at many of my surveys. Do we get them right on the first round of comments? There is some given, there is back and forth all the time. Now, when the second round of comments were made, those were only given to the county staff and not presented to the project manager at LPA. That's important to note because they, that protocol was not followed. It was at that point the county staff called off the negotiations with the LPA, with LPA, without giving us the opportunity to respond. Is that negotiating in good faith? I think not. The county staff will also tell you that the two fees from the primary consultants differ in cost by almost $107,000. LPA's fee is 324, give or take, and Croy is at 217. I can't argue with that fact. You don't have to have an engineering degree from Georgia Tech to realize one number is smaller than the other. But what I will say is that the scope of services in the two proposals are not an apples to apples comparison, and thus the fee differential is very misleading, and there is not a practical way that these two proposals can be evaluated equitably, due mainly to the fact that there was no scope ever given to either consultant on which to base their fees. 
Without such, there will be different design approaches and assumptions made by the opposing firms, and therefore, there is no real way to compare the two. I think anyone in my profession will agree with that, and luckily, Mr. McNichol just did. Keep in mind, with other procurements for professional engineering and surveying services in this county, there's a scope given to the consultants. For example, Mr. Rocky Romero of Splosht doesn't tell his road designers, give me a fee to design Elliott Road from Crumley Road to East Lake. He gives them a set of specifications and documents. None of that was ever given to either us or them, okay? That's so he can review the proposals equitably, okay? There was no such scope ever given. Essentially, the county staff's recommendation is based solely on financing. An important consideration, however, not the only consideration. Just look at the top of the recommendation on your agenda. This item is brought to you before under the division headed financial services. Whereas every other matter related to this airport since you acquired it has been brought to the debate under division heading county manager. Also, the last page of the resolution states that it was signed off by the county attorney, the finance director, and the county manager. Why wasn't the county's own professional staff of licensed surveyors and engineers, of which I think you have probably five to six that I know of, involved with any of the review of that? That's free consulting you got on your own payroll, whether that be public works or splashed or even stormwater. Avports, yes, they were allowed to review the Croix bid, but what you want here is there was a conversation of a conference call in which Mike Ryder, the project manager for LPA, asked the county manager if he would like Avports to review Croy, I mean LPA's bid. No, he was denied that request. Because these faultly based, because you can falsely base their opinion on price alone, given the recent budget situation, I get that. $107,000 is a lot of money. Please note that the budget situation you guys are faced with is not unique to the Henry County Board of Commissioners. It resonates into the private sector as well, the very reason I'm here today. The only difference between our budget situation and mine is commons and zeros. Three, if you want to fairly evaluate the fees, I would like to inform you that the budget for the design of the extension is 440000 as set forth in the capital improvement plan for Atlanta South Regional which is $116,000 more than the fee proposed by our team. With the 90% match by the FAA, that is a savings to the county of almost $12,000. I'm not going to hear that, okay? Sure, the fee by the secondary consultant would be even bigger. However, that is based on the false assumption that the scope of the two proposals are the same. Keep in mind that the county staff met with the project manager of the secondary consultant, Mr. Don Hicks, last week and informed him of the scope difference inherent to the two proposals, particularly as it relates to the design survey, the task my firm brings to the LPA team. And that was brought to Mr. Lett's attention in my meeting with him at 3 p.m. last Monday in his office. The secondary consultant then stated to the county staff that he would revise the scope to include a field run survey, as our team has done already from the get-go. However, he would not increase the fee. That same courtesy was denied the LPA team by the county when LPA offered to drop their fee of $324,000 by 3% to match the DOT's final fee recommendations of man hours and scope. That's after LPA finally saw the second round of comments from the Georgia DOT because they were never transmitted to them as they were the first time. That appears to be an arbitrary and capricious act on the part of the county and its staff. The county staff will also lead you to believe that they contacted the secondary consultant two to three weeks ago, and within eight days they magically had it negotiated. Please note in your package, you have a geotechnical proposal from ATC, another firm that's not affiliated with Henry County whatsoever. It's dated May 17th, a full three weeks before LPA was notified of that. It references a site plan given to them by Croy on April 23rd, a few six weeks before Croy was notified. What I'm laying for you is factual evidence that the groundwork was already being laid for LPA and the Metro and the CMS team to be moved out and go another way. Lastly, the secondary consultant is already on site surveying the property in preparation for the award of this task order being there. They were there as late as Friday afternoon of last week. I got the pictures to prove it. I passed the same truck this morning when I came to this county meeting on behalf of all my employees. 
This is being done prior to any authorization by this governing body. That seems to be a presumptuous effort on someone's part. Have they been given approval by the county staff of a task of approximately what equates to a quarter of a million dollars without this board's approval? Have they compromised the protocol and procurement issues directly by the FAA, whereas your 90% match could be jeopardized? Not to mention the fact that as a secondary consultant completely undermines the morale of my employees at Metro as my survey crew passed them by coming into the property on, month, on Friday. As I've already told them uh, at our monthly December meeting that we had been awarded a five-year contract. So they're looking at somebody else who's working on the job when I haven't told them as the leader of the company that we had that work. The secondary consultant informed the, sur uh, informed the staff at the FBO that they will be there for the next two weeks. Based on the rates Croy's given you of $105 an hour, that is an almost a $10,000 investment or what some might say a gamble on their part prior to the award of this task order. I find it far-fetched to believe that someone would embark on something like that without some sort of authorization with the, by the county, whether properly given or not. Perhaps there's something we don't know, but I'm not going to subscribe to this conspiracy theory. I'm trying to lay down facts. In summary, the procurement process associated with the design services at ASAR, Atlanta South Regional, was never meant to be an open bid process. That is why the RFQ process was done in 2011. You have two qualified firms that were part of the design team that was rated the most qualified out of nine submitted proposals. Please note that this task order is awarded to the secondary consultant. All fees associated with these services will leave the county and go to two firms located in Cobb County. By choosing the primary consultant, approximately 30% or $85,000 of the fees will stay here and help stimulate this local economy with two locally qualified firms. Two firms who combined have a 32-year investment in this local community, an initiative that I've heard each one of you in public forums state that you wanted to promote. Here's your chance to follow through with those statements. Finally, please don't misunderstand my comments here today. They are not meant as a specific attack on any one person within this government. I simply felt compelled to bring about these facts from the perspective of a local business owner who is responsible for not only my family, but also those of nine other people of which I employ here in Henry County. I'm simply trying to make a positive difference in this county that my family has called home since 1824, a fact that makes me proud and a sincere responsibility I feel that I need to follow through for the example they set before me by my ancestors who have lived where fellow local business owners paid taxes and buried their own in this great county for eight generations. Thank you for your opportunity to speak. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Does anyone have a question? I'm Chad Oleg, County Manager, and um, Terry to respond to uh, Mr. Elliott's concerns. <clears throat> Let me try to respond to, uh, try to make some notes as uh, Mr. Elliott was speaking so I could respond to him. Um, as he said, uh, no denying that there was a primary and a secondary. According to FAA, you deal with the primary until such time as you feel you can need to move on to the secondary, and that was what I did. Um, I did, uh, I, this may be a little out of order. Um, I was uh, on vacation that week and received an email from uh, uh, GDOT that indicated that the, uh, they had reviewed the secondary um, proposal or responses to the, their requests and in doing so said that uh, please give me a call so we can review. Um, and I ended up uh, calling her, spent time with her, um, and said that uh, part of the issue I had was not only the fact that the, uh, hours and the hours themselves per her request for review were not met per her request and asked her at that time if it was permissible for the county to move to the, the secondary, if you would. Um, she said that that was our choice, that was our uh, decision to make. I asked her to go back and again to check with people above her to ensure that that is in fact the case. Uh, I did receive a confirming email from um, uh, GDOT that uh, says I spoke with Carol and she feels it's up to the county to decide how to proceed from here. So it was with that email that I received, again going back and saying please let me know if we can, and the answer was yes, and we had the right to go then to the secondary um, uh, consultant. Um, as to the 
uh, issue of um, um, and that the original email I believe I got was uh, the 11th of June uh, from um, GDOT that they had made their review. Um, then on the 12th, uh, when I talked with uh, GDOT, that's when they again came back and wrote me this email I just read. Um, on the, uh, sorry for the fumbling here, I'm trying to find all these papers. Um, the, I spoke with Mr. Uh, Ryder first, informed him that I would be going to our secondary. Uh, he obviously was not happy. Uh, again, this whole thing has nothing to do with a discussion and conversation myself in discussing their subcontractors, just their overall review. Um, the next day he wrote an email to myself and uh, GDOT indicating that, uh, it, um, that it was his understanding, as Mr. Elliott brought up, that uh, the review is completed and that the precedent was to provide a scope and fee comment. Um, from my understanding of FAA and GDOT rules, regulations, and so on, I was going on basically my conversation the prior day or days that said an email that said it was okay for the county to proceed as they chose, uh, and I did. Um, Mr. Ryder then, uh, with LPA, wrote the email to GDOT, and GDOT wrote back to him, and he also said that uh, he requested those comments before to us by the close of business today. The GDOT responded that evening and said, I apologize for the delay. The department's review of LPA's second submittal for the airport, Atlanta South Regional Airport runway extension consists of simply of a comparison of the department's original comments. The submittal did not contain information that altered our original recommendation. So as was mentioned a minute ago, the review that evidently was due to LPA uh, had not been put in writing. Mr. Ryder made, of LPA made, that, uh, uh, made uh, GDOT aware of it, and GDOT responded accordingly, as I said, that it didn't contain information in their second proposal that altered their original recommendation. That, again, from my standpoint, solidified, again, the continued uh, response um, to, uh, that I had made to go to uh, LPA. Um, as to the uh, commentary, uh, the comments that were made regarding um, AC, uh, I can't remember the name, firm ACT, I think, on the geotechnical uh, that uh, CROI uses and the date that was on it. Um, not knowing uh, policy, but having FAA procedures rather uh, on the design, uh, the start of the design work. Um, you recall that we had used um, LPA for both the EA and uh, ALP and a DBE, all the initials and letters. Uh, when it came to the um, design work for the um, striping of the airport, uh, we went, I went to uh, Croy. Um, it was a small item. Uh, I even had um, um, a, approval of uh, GDOT to go ahead and have them do that small piece of work. We had already, if you would, had some work being done by Croy, our secondary. Um, and at, after that happened, then this being a big part of what the process is, and both of them being qualified uh, and pre-qualified by the county and approved, uh, I was going to have both of them bid, and I'd asked both of them to bid, and that was explained. I then basically had uh, uh, GDOT call me and say, no, 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 you can't do that. You cannot get a bid from CROI. Uh, this is after I had told CROI I was going to want to have two bids. I found out that is not what you do. I didn't know that was FAA policy. I called CROI immediately and said, sorry, you cannot bid, do not bid, can't look at a bid. Uh, you understand the process, and they basically said that uh, um, they, they said, fine, they, they backed out. So to the extent that they had started the process to ask uh, ACT or whoever else to put the stuff together, um, I would have wanted them to be responsive. Uh, part of it was uh, going to the time frame that uh, Mr. Elliott mentioned, that we just approved the EA and the LLP in May, I believe you said May 1st. Part of the problem I had is that the process to get the EA and the ALP approved uh, that took until the time when you approved it, as you can see, as a span. It started sometime actually in December, if not in, and uh, I remember going to a meeting as a commissioner there when they were discussing it, and it took the four months to get it done. 
There were numerous emails going back and forth between LPA and GDOT to, uh, to get to the, to the hours and scope that GDOT felt uh, should be appropriate um, based on their review. That time frame of four months, if you would, was something we didn't have for the design work. Um, um, LPA submitted their proposal. Um, GDOT reviewed it. They got back. And again, we were in this, it was, I don't have the exact dates, but it was at least three weeks to a month from the time that started till the time uh, Carla had advised me that she had reviewed it and said, um, give her a call, let's discuss it, which I did, asked the question as I said earlier, and she wrote back, as you saw, um, or what I just read re a minute ago, that, um, you know, that it's, it's a county's decision uh, as to how to proceed from here. Um, as far as it being a financial decision, again, until um, Croy's bid um, was submitted to GDOT, GDOT reviewed it, the amount of money that Croy's bid would be or end up. Uh, could have just as well been uh, the same figure. It turned out it was what it was. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, I think uh, part of it is is that Croy does their work in-house uh, in, in, in many cases as far as uh, subcontractors. That is unfortunate because in this particular case with LPA, they do use subcontractors and they are local and I regret that they're not part of uh, Croy's team. Um, and this is nothing to do with trying to cut a local vendor out. Uh, as I said, my review with GDOT and their review and the scope was based on um, the review that was made and, and the shortfall that was there. And again, the other was running out of time. I did, didn't feel with where we were at um, based on conference calls that we have every week to discuss, and now they're every other week, to discuss the status of the airport on various things, including this and operations and fuel and hangars and a bunch of other things each week. Part of the subject matter, uh, it was where are we at in the design. And again, uh, LPA was doing it. Uh, Mike Ryder with LPA was on that call and indicated if we don't get the approval by GDOT by, I believe it was June 18th, this project could be in jeopardy. We'd be, we possibly could have some problems in, in uh, making it happen. Uh, that wasn't an exact thing, but it was a statement of concern. Uh, based on that and based on the fact it was now the 11th, I think, when, when Carla, uh, when GDOT mentioned this, uh, her review, and still not where it was, and of course the comments I meant that uh, she wrote the day later, um, I just felt I could not continue to see us going uh, in another week or months to negotiate further and if we weren't going to be able to come to agreement, if I did have to bring the secondary in, they wouldn't have any time to get this done because we'd have been out of time based on the continued negotiations between GDOT and LPA or myself to uh, get this project completed, our design work uh, ready. Um, as to the budget of $440,000, that is, uh, we worked on uh, myself, uh, Mike Bush, um, Finance uh, worked with um, LPA and uh, <clears throat> and uh, Appport uh, many 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 hours many days to review our CIP the ACIP the, the construction and process uh, the final uh, dollars that were allocated or estimated to do phase one was four hundred forty thousand dollars that was put together by LPA uh, that was the best latest greatest that they could come up with at the time. As I indicated earlier, their bid, when it did come in, was less than the 440 um, for probably extremely good reasons, uh, whatever it may be. And it was less and, again, was reduced by a few thousand dollars later in their second proposal. Um, as far as the approval um, by GDOT, um, I received uh, from GDOT, uh, good morning, Fred, the department has reviewed Croy's second submittal they did have, they submitted their bid. There were comments made and review made by uh, GDOT. They sent them to uh, Croy. Croy responded immediately, got them responses. And then on the uh, 22nd, uh, GDOT said, uh, the department has reviewed Croy's second submittal for the runway extension design phase one and concur with the scope and hours as submitted. And again, scope is to get the runway extended in accordance, in accordance with the GDOT and FAA rules. It also goes on to say this work will be eligible for reimbursement. 
the time of construction this funding allows. So again, the statement they made is that it is eligible for reimbursement. Um, this, unlike the EA and whatever, will be reimbursed uh, by the uh, by GDOT FAA um, probably sometime in February. Uh, I did work an arrangement, and uh, LPA was kind enough as well on the EA and the ALP to extend the payment uh, terms, if you would, for the EA and the ALP. And Croy has, in their, uh, um, in their, they've done the same thing and said that they would not, they would build the July work, the August work. The July, everything is typically due in 30 days, but the July bill will not be due until September 30th, as will be the August bill, so we will not be paying any of this money for the first two months of invoicing until September 30th, and we will be eligible for reimbursement, as I indicated, sometime uh, when we get this, uh, during the time of construction, when uh, GDOT gets their money from FAA. Um, on the um, conversations, I was not a party to the conversations. I again indicated to uh, Mr. Elliott that I would get the introduction, if need be, to uh, have him speak with uh, Croy to see if, in fact, they've got to do the work. Could they possibly use them? Uh, he did call um, Croy. Um, they had a discussion. Michael did write me a letter, referenced, uh, or an email, rather. Um, I took that email and I forwarded it to Croy and said, here's uh, basically what M Mr. Elliott has said that is a result of your conversation your scope, your hours, or whatever may be different. Um, Croy uh, came back, reviewed that, and they're here today, and hopefully can expound if you'd like, and basically said that um, uh, there may have been a misinterpretation or whatever, but the aerial was what they needed. They still were going to do the field survey. It was part of their bid. Um, I do have, um, as a follow-up, last week, again, with um, Michael Joseph, who is not here, but is with Croy that did go into the uh, fact that uh, they were going to use, again, like I said, the prior uh, work that was going to be done that we were paying for in the ALP for the aerial, but since it wasn't going to be ready, they did, in fact, say that, fine, we will do it ourselves, we'll contract for it, we're not going to change the bid accordingly. Um, had it been ready, then they could have used it. Um, and as I understand it, they've already uh, gone out and done that, uh, uh, consider that. The issue of um, uh, them, Mr. Croy was up here a minute ago. I have him come back up. As far as them being out, I can assure you that there has been no indication for me um, or anybody else, it's been primarily me, that has told them they have this bid. Um, this has to be approved by the commissioners. That has always been the case. Uh, as he indicated earlier, uh, he's uh, come back and say it again if you'd like, and that is that uh, whatever they've done up to this point, they are gambling, yes, just as Mr. Elliott said, and uh, to the extent uh, they do not get this uh, uh, proposal or this bid, um, then um, yes, I guess they've done work that they're not going to get paid for. But there's been nothing from myself to them, wouldn't do it. I've known this had to be approved. That's part of the process. Um, I have spoke with each of you to explain the process as, as best I can. I have the documentation to go through some of the things I've just read to you. Um, trying to think what other things that were mentioned. Um, Mr. Preston has a question. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, was it true that, that with the second correction that came from the, I guess, GEO, the, the Department of Transportation, was it was only off by $10,000 before you decided to bring? You have, to, secondary I, I, you have to uh, take um, GDOT's review, and they reviewed the various sections of the uh, proposal. And they bid it based on hours and said, this one should be a third less. This should be half of these hours. You shouldn't be using these hours for both engineers and whatever on these and so on and so on and so forth. Um, in, uh, uh, Was it $10,000, though, if you I didn't, all uh, that up? I didn't measure the dollars and hours. I just looked at the hours that were compared and what was requested as far as the, uh, uh, the, the de design hours were 1905. Most of the most of the work is in design. 1900, the original proposal went down 36 hours to 1869. Uh, in GDOT's review of it, uh, there were many items that they they mentioned under design that uh, 
basically, um, the responses were that from LPA is that we did change some of those hours. Um, there was something that um, they, that about the blast fence came up. They took that out, but they added something else, and uh, basically the hours that came out basically were about the same as went back in, and that I think it was 16 versus 15 or something. So, again, the review of those hours uh, based on um, GDOT's review as to what could and should be done uh, was not at the uh, hours and scope or specifications. And uh, the other is that um, during the uh, review of um, the EA and ALP, um, as they continue to go back and forth and items were done during that four-month period, um, the review itself consisted of uh, other items that were discussed and um, I didn't know how far this thing was going to go. All right, we had another comment, um, a person signed up for public comment that I want to recognize, and that's Mr. Andrew Johnson of 105 Park, Park something drive, Park 42 drive in Locust Grove. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow board members. I'm Andrew Johnson. And this is the, uh, I've been in business here 15 years, and this is the first time I've been uh, in front of this board. And we appreciate you giving us the time. Uh, we're located in Locust Grove, and this is our corporate headquarters. I'd like to speak of the issue of uh, design consultant selection for the new Atlanta South Regional Airport. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about our company. We are a small local civil engineering firm that specializes in geotechnical and environmental engineering. To date, CMS has provided engineering services for more than 1,500 different clients statewide and beyond. Well, one area of our expertise is in pavement engineering uh, and our expertise in hot mix and hot mix asphalt mix design. It is highly likely that if you drove to this meeting today, you rode on one of our mixes, either designed or tested by our firm. CMS has been in business in Henry County now for 15 years, going on 15 years. Uh, estimated that we have expended about $9 million in payroll to our employees since our inception in 1998. It goes without saying that we at CMS, we live here. We go to church here, we shop here, we work here, and uh, once in a while we even get to play here. These past, past 15 years have been a very rewarding and great experience. Uh, a lot of that is due to the staff that y'all have uh, in some of the projects that we previously work on and continue to work on with, with you. And uh, just want to say uh, we deal with a lot of counties, uh, a lot of different governments, and your staff is, uh, is just a great professional group of people, and we appreciate them. However, the last few years have brought uh, uh, with uh, them much difficulty uh, with our routing economy these last 15 years since we've been in business. I realize I understand that I'm preaching to the choir here. I have invested 15 years of my life and my career here in Henry County and have literally raised my family in this business. I have a 16-year-old son who started off in a playpen in our office in Locust Grove. And boy, how time does fly. Unlike many construction-related businesses, CMS is still in business. And we are continuing to fight for our survival on all fronts. However, we should not have to fight that hard on our home front. Just like many other local businesses, governments, churches, et cetera, we have cut expenses, reduced payrolls, endured pay cuts, and reduced employee benefits over these past five years, and by God's grace have managed to stay afloat. At present, I believe CMS is the remaining geotechnical firm to have its corporate office within the county. The highly technical services we provide are critical for the success of any and every major civil engineering project. Now getting down to business, just like Metro Engineering, CMS has been a part of the LPA design team for the Atlanta South Regional Airport Consultant Contract, which was selected as a lead consultant. CMS, as part of the LPA team, would act as a sub-consultant sub providing geotechnical engineering services uh, on this project during the design process. As I understand, this first project is the major runway expansion project. I also understand that the LPA group was selected based on a request for qualifications, a RFQ, as the lead or primary consultant. 
as I understand, the RFQ process is a methodology for procuring professional services. Typically, at the end of the selection process, one consultant is deemed most qualified by some pre-established set of criteria, and the contract is awarded to the most qualified consultant. I also understand this RFQ process can be a long and drawn out process and requires much time and effort by county officials, and we appreciate Fred's time and, and all that have been involved in that. I want you to know I appreciate all your work to date to meet the demands of this, of this process in light of some major challenges, budget shortfalls, leadership changes, etc. The outcome of the particular RFQ, however, yielded not just one consultant but two consultants. The process was not typical in that respect, uh, from my opinion. The LPA group or team was selected as a leader primary consultant team. They ranked the highest by the county set criteria with a pre-selected panel. And Croy Engineering was also selected as a backup consultant. As I understand this outcome, LPA was to take the lead role and Croy was to provide backup if LPA became too busy or for whatever reason uh, could not perform the assigned task. With the LPA team, a large portion of the design work will go to small businesses like myself and to Metro Engineering located at the airport. Both local businesses need work at this time. If the board chooses Croy Engineering, again, as I understand, no local vendors will be utilized for the design portion of this project. By keeping as much work local as possible by highly qualified firms, we will do a few things. We will support our local businesses. We will give our local businesses a valuable experience on high-profile work like this airport. We will improve our relationships with large design firms, uh, with our local vendors, uh, design firms like Croy Engineering and our LPA group. We will keep the money circulating within our county, which is important, our local economy. We will increase revenues. Uh, these are very important revenues. The Board of Commissioners splash, the Board of, e Board of Education splash, and hopefully the statewide T splash, pending the outcome on July 31st. It is critical we keep our uh, local businesses as busy and as healthy during this very difficult economy. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I just was looking at my notes. There's two other things I'd like to uh, uh, respond to from Mr. Elliott uh, comments, and that is that, uh, and, and also uh, Mr. Johnson mentioned, and that is. And, and I think Terry cleared it, and that is as far as an RFQ or whatever else, again, um, the process we went through as far as having uh, LPA do the EA and the ALP, um, we didn't have an RFQ for those as well as the DEB. Uh, what we were doing during those, if you would, uh, reviews or work that they prepared and submitted to GDOT and ourselves was not with, a, a, as uh, was mentioned, a, regular RFQ process. They were, in my opinion, selected as the primary. They were told what needed to be done. If anything, the EA, um, Environmental Assessment, uh, being the most difficult, uh, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but nothing else does involve a lot of stuff and technical stuff and so on, needed to be done. And, and again, they were awarded that recently, and they're doing it. That was the 5-1. I believe that was mentioned as the date. There was nothing ever mentioned by uh, LPA during that time frame from December till the time it was awarded that says, hey, we're, we're doing this and we should have this, where's this and whatever. Likewise, when the uh, runway was um, requested to be designed by the, by the primary LPA, again, there was nothing that came forward and says we can't do this without an RFQ or whatever else, RFP or so on, before we can proceed. So as far as having one, needing one, whatever, again, based on uh, my past relation working with the other items as well as the fact that they've been approved and got reviewed through the GDOT process, uh, not only with uh, the other items but the design that uh, LPA did without one. Again, I didn't uh, feel the need or think that we had to have one or I thought I would have been asked for it long before that. Um, as far as using our staff, it was brought up that we have all the professional staff here. This is airport, this is not roads. We do have an airport management company, as was indicated, and I mentioned I did use the uh, um, review by AFWARS, our professional firm that is um, 
an airport management company. They have their engineer review it. He reviewed it, and I said, made his comments, and we reviewed those with Croy to make sure those items were consistent with what uh, and weren't missed by GDOT in their review before they, as they concurred and signed off on it. Um, again, to the point that was raised um, um, as far as um, CMS having been a part of uh, L, um, LPA as well as uh, Metro, again, that's the subcontract that, that they're working with, the subcontract LPA work with. As I mentioned, the, there was a, a difference, um, and I, Mr. Johnson called me yesterday, and I did speak with him last night. The first time I really uh, had a conversation with him, he had called, wanted to talk. I called him back. We talked in the evening. Um, again, he, he has been getting work. Um, this type of work would have been, again, to keep it local would have been good. Don't disagree. Would love to do that. Uh, moving on to Croy and they doing it. Uh, again, I indicated I would speak with uh, Croy to see if there's any way that the work that they're subcontracting could possibly be given. My understanding is from Mr. Johnson last night that his bid might have been similar um, if it weren't for the fact that he might have had more borings than what Croy was doing in theirs with their subcontractor. Um, and again, uh, per Croy, the number of borings that they have their subcontractor doing they feel are sufficient to stay and do the job that needs to be done and make sure there's no further exposures. Um, I think that's my notes to try to respond. Uh, Mr. Croy, is anything you can add? That well, I want to recognize this gentleman over here quickly, okay. very quickly. No, 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 you need to come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, I'm Jacob Redwan. I'm here on behalf of the LPA group. Address is 106 Alexander Run Pass, Sure Hill, Georgia. Uh, Mr. Ryder couldn't be here today. Uh, he had prior engagements for this week and just could not get those changed. I am, for lack of better words, his right-hand man, so I wanted to come here and address and make sure that you understand our position. Um, we've got a lot of investment here on this airport uh, when it started with Clayton County. For several years, we tried to get this thing to move forward, the runway extension they were trying to get to go. It kind of died down. And we're very happy that Henry County took over. It allowed us to go the other way, to, the, uh, to extend the runway the other way. The other way was quite difficult because of EA problems, and that's kind of what made that stop. Uh, when I say EA, environmental assessment problems. Um, uh, we did have the luxury of looking at Croy's proposal when it hit y'all's online system Thursday night. And I personally went through that and just looked at it to see what the differences were. Um, um, differences are lack of, of, of details. Um, I'm not saying that Croy is not doing them. I'm just saying it doesn't state they're doing them. So they're, they're, their proposal and the way they do business is a little different than LPA does. We like to stay exactly what we're doing so that you know what you're getting. Um, you know, for instance, we've invested a lot of time in meetings uh, between the prior county manager and the existing county manager, uh, trying to get this thing on, on schedule, get it going, stuff like that. Those meetings, I don't know if Croy took account in those, those meetings. Um, we talk about the survey. I mean, they're, they're doing a survey for about 30,000, we've got one for about 58. Uh, they're using the aerial photography, which they're not now, so I didn't know that until I got here today. Um, the accuracy of the aerial, we, we kind of disagree with that. Um, it's a two-foot accuracy. Their new one may be better than that, but the one we're providing is two foot, and we think that that causes construction problems. Um, uh, Geotech, I reviewed those two proposals hand for hand because that was also included in the package y'all sent out on the web. Um, it's lacking some lab testing that we think is necessary uh, to make sure that you got the right compaction, the right type of soils, you're getting a good end product. Um, we think that's necessary. Everybody may not think that's necessary. Um, I kind of say all that because I, I think when the proposal was sent out to us and the process was followed somewhat, um, we were asked to design the extension. Well. You're just asked to design the extension, but it leaves questions on how you want us to proceed. So we proceed the way we think is best. 
I think if the details were laid out for that process, those questions could have been answered and negotiated. Um, so I think comparing the two is, if you looked at them side by side yourself, I don't think that you could compare the two. I think there's things missing in one and probably missing in the other and vice versa, but I think there's a great difference in the way they're laid out. And I don't think that the end product, may they be the same, you don't know that for sure when you look at it. And there's no way to tell from just looking at the tasks themselves. Um, so basically what we're looking for is a fair process, giving apples to apples, and so that we can give you a fee for what you asked for. Now we think we did that, but make sure that the other firm's doing the same thing. And so if the task and what you're looking for is laid out, then we both can submit a fee in the correct order as provided by the FA guidance. Um, uh, for instance, some of the things that were left out, I think, were probably grooving surveying. And as discussed in the review by GDOT, uh, the response that we got that uh, was read here today was, you didn't comply with our notes or our comments. In actuality, when we did reply, we reduced it by 20000 I think to, to answer your question, I was told we were in 10% of the GDOT's cost. That's what I was told. I haven't looked at the numbers directly. And it may have been closer to, I think Michael said he thought it was around 3% difference, uh, what GDOT had, had uh, estimated. Um, and 10% by guidance is allowable acceptance uh, by the FA standards. Um, with that being said, there's, there's just stuff that's not laid out there. Um, but during that second review, our response was you didn't, you didn't meet it, but there were still questions that were not answered to say, do you want to use this aerial survey? Now, you can use the aerial survey, but we just think that you risk construction problems. We'll be glad to do it, but we just want to make sure that you know the risk. Um, so there were still unanswered questions in that process that, that we felt like it was still under negotiation. And we committed to the, to the county to resolve that within seven days if we give them Apple opportunity to do that. Um, uh, as far as the ALP and EA revisions in that four-month process, that, that, I don't want to say that's typical, but that takes the process very much more than design because you're dealing with other agencies outside of GDOT and FAA or stuff inside of them that they've got to coordinate. This one was particular especially because they just didn't know which direction to go. Um, for instance, the original extension under Clayton County was the opposite way, and now we went the other way, and they were trying to see if they could do a supplemental or they'd do a full-blown one. There was a lot of discussions that made that happen, and uh, a lot of stuff that the previous contract manager helped us get through with GDOT and FAA. So there was a lot of uh, stuff that just had to be dealt with. Um, and the ALP kind of followed the EA process, so it was hand in hand with that. Um, but really all we're looking for is a fair process. We appreciate the opportunity here, and uh, we just uh, have a lot of, a lot of at, yeah, not at risk, but we've put an investment into this airport uh, from Clayton County now to Henry County that we'd like to, to move forward with. So that's all I have to say. Mr. County Manager, do you have anything else further? He mentioned um, something with regards to bringing their price down within 10 percent. Was he talking about within 10 percent of um, uh, a Croy's bid or another price? Now he was talking about from the, the, the 342 was re reduced to about 323, 324. I believe it's their contention that based on the review GDOT made and what they didn't meet within GDOT's request, that to have met GDOT's request, they felt it was within 10 percent to have met the rest of what GDOT wanted. Okay. Uh, I, I think that um, uh, what, was, what was just mentioned was the um, both firms, I think he, he indicated, do things differently. Again, they are both well-qualified firms in the state, both working on airports, again, selected primary, secondary. 
um, scored accordingly and, and so on, and that uh, how they do their work and GDOT signing off and reviewing the work, um, and again, concurring that the hours and the scope is, is, is to do the job. Um, from that standpoint, uh, again, that's the grounds on which that uh, I see this proposal as being uh, okay to uh, proceed with. Um, as far as the EA and LP, taking typically long, a lot of discussions going back and forth. There were a lot of discussions, and again, that was part of my concern, having to get, see that continue to go through on the design work as having a third, fourth, or continued discussion based on the experiences I had had over that process of getting the EA and the ALP approved. Um, I'd, I'd have to have uh, uh, Croy respond if they could. As far as the issue on lab testing, I think that was brought out. Um, if, if you could respond on uh, the comment was made that uh, uh, the geotech you're using does not have or your proposal does not have lab testing and necessity of it. and. Uh, I can't respond to that. Uh, that was brought to me last night by Mr. Johnson, and again, he mentioned it today. I don't know the exact detail, but, but certainly the, the firm that uh, uh, we propose using, uh, ha again, is experienced in this type of work, and, and we feel, uh, as does GDOT, in, in approving our scope and services, uh, that's what's submitted is certainly within uh, the requirements for, for this particular project based on their type of experience and ours. And uh, um, um, I would feel like, you know, we some of what I said and heard this, this morning is maybe questioning, I don't want to say questioning professional, professionalism of Croy Engineering. You know, uh, this is not the first airport design we put forward. And, and, and we know certainly what it takes to do this type of work. Uh, what you've heard today is from a lot of qualified firms here uh, that came for you, and, and I certainly understand the issue of local firms. I mean, heck, I'm a local firm, too, where I get my mail, and I understand that. Uh, and you would have my commitment as owner that, you know, the, the, the future would certainly understand that issue and, and would work towards that. This particular project had a timetable that we feel is very constrained. And we understand there's some other issues there of us trying to move this project forward, even putting some of our own resources to get things kicked off. Uh, but as this moves forward and, and if Crow Engineering is able to do work in the future uh, here for y'all, you can certainly have my commitment as the owner that uh, uh, the, the local connection is important and we recognize that. Mr. Stamey, I think you had a comment. Yeah, Mr. Elliott, this question might be for you, but under the proposal, um, that we're looking at, do you want to come up here, I'll ask you, Michael. Um, I've seen it twice in this proposal, and I don't know if you included it on yours or not, but it says down here, expenses for services such as mileage, document reproducing, uh, permits, fee applications, shipping costs are not included in the above services. All these will be reimbursed. Is that something that applies to your side too? Because no, ma no, 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 sir, it's all included. Uh, you know, case in point, right we want to talk about survey crew efficiency. My guys get to the office every morning at 7 a.m. and give a full eight hours. Okay? Every one of y'all know where my office is. Okay? You're paying Croy eight hours a day for a survey crew. Two and a half hours is spent in the truck. I passed them at 8.30 this morning. My crew can set up the gun, the survey gun, and be taking the first shot at 7.45. Guys, I can't tell you how much survey data my firm has there from when we did the Alta survey in a matter of two weeks with 71 title exceptions to step up to the plate and make an investment in this county. I understand my, my deal here today, again, is not with Mr. Croy. I've known Mr. Croy for 17 years when he was the head of the Cobb County DOT. The professionalism is not there. My issue is with the procurement itself and where you, yes, the DOT told Mr. Aletta it's the county's decision. The county didn't make that decision to go with the secondary. An individual did. If y'all are going to take eighty-five to ninety thousand dollars of local revenue out from this county, I think that should be up to y'all. Because y'all are sitting here having to face what Mr. Johnson and I are saying today, based on what staff, one staff member did. Okay, the decision he makes affects the livelihood of twenty local individuals. 
since 1995, since my company's been there, we have pumped 10 to $12 million of payroll into this economy. I have 10 people. Five years ago, there were 30. Okay? What else do we have to do as a local contractor to make an investment in this community? Not that I want some picture up here with the commission or some medal or my name in the paper. When y'all have an aggrieved property owner on Henry Parkway who wants in a million and a half dollars, okay, National Christian Foundation, you just settled that a month ago. Miss, Miss Wiley and Mr. Romero come to me and ask me to testify in front of their attorney, and we drop it 90 percent. I didn't ask for anything other than I didn't even want to thank you. That's the investment I make into this county that I've called home all my life. Okay? When we lose a bid for a survey job on Higgins Road that we did 18 months ago, I didn't come up here and complain. It was an open bid and we lost it. But when Terry McMickle called us and said, the survey that we contracted for is messed up, Michael, can you send a crew out there tomorrow and check all our GPS points and make sure we're right? Absolutely. We did it. Okay? I could be here till 5 o'clock in the afternoon telling you about the investments we made in the community. And it just shames me that that's not reciprocated by this county. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Preston, you had a comment? Well, I just was going to, while Mr. Coy was up there, I, I've had a chance to talk to both engineering firms. And I will tell you, nobody has spoken ill will about your firm. I think your reputation is, is good. And I hope that that, is, that impression has not been relayed, you know, wrongly today. Um, I think it's, you nailed on, I think you do understand because you, you, you mentioned you understand the local issues. And um, I just wanted to make sure we thanked you for coming down and um, that your good name is still held up. It's just that we wanted to make sure we were talking about apples to apples because I know that it sounds like when we asked for the job, we didn't, I know I come from the school system before I was doing this. When we build a building, we tell them exactly what type of tile to even lay down specifically. I mean, you have to go bid it out to the to the T so we're getting apples to apples. And that's the only thing. I just wanted to make sure you understood that every, everybody I've talked to in this case has not spoken ill will towards your, your company uh, in any scope whatsoever. Thank you very much. Mr. Holder. Mr. Holder. Yeah. Um, and Michael, Elliot, or you either one could, could obviously answer this, but we've talked about an aerial survey or a field survey. What is the difference in cost? And obviously that, is, that will factor into the difference. Either one is acceptable according to GDOT standards or FAA standards according to what Fred has said. What is the difference? I know uh, Metro has said that they were considering the field survey. You said that you were going to have like an aerial survey. What, what is the difference in cost in those two types of surveys? Sure, sure. I, and, and basically the difference in cost, there is some, when you look at an aerial mapping, uh, you fly and take a picture, you know, of some areas like 400 and something acres uh, having to do with this airport. You, you still have field crews that go out and set controls. They go out in, in, in areas that you know that, are in, that you need greater detail on, like the, the, the extension, the runway itself, maybe locate property corners. You still have field crews out there. The big difference is that there are certain parts of that 400 acres that you have people, one person in the office, uh, looking at that photogrammetry and developing those contours uh, over certain areas of that, maybe the wider contour areas, you still have field crews that are doing the detail work, like on the runway and all, but that wider area, and you and the difference in cost comes from one person in the office versus having a two or three man survey crew out in the field over certain parts of the project. In dollars, what are we talking about on this project? I, I, again, I can't speak. Uh, our experience, it, it would certainly, you know, uh, depends on the project and what kind of detail. You know, we're, we're still going to have survey crews out there a good bit of the time. Uh, we, I, hadn't, I didn't price it doing a full field run survey, so I certainly uh, okay. not comfortable giving that answer. Okay. And I wouldn't want to speak for, for Metro's, okay. uh, you know, dollars. But... Uh, but but basically, it's the difference between one person in the office over part of the time versus a two or three man survey crew out there part of the time. Okay. Uh, so you can see there's some personnel differences sure. in personnel costs. Sure, okay. Mr. Preston, 
on the boring, I know the boring was listed at 11 borings were going to be done in this. I know Andrew said that because that came up in conversations, he said he could have priced it. How many were we going? How many were was Andrew going? Were, was CMS going to do? Any, so 17 total, or, or just 13? 17? To uh, what was already discussed, um, as I indicated earlier, I'd taken this back to Croy, and Croy had sent me um, an email, as I said, to, to discuss this aerial thing. And again, in the email, it states, please note that all flight survey and mapping techniques will be in accordance with current FAA and GDOT standards and requirements. Please also note the scope of work described above would include in task order number two, which was reviewed and approved by GDOT for the design of the runway and parallel taxiway extension. The prior parts of that email described the topographic and everything else that was in question and brought up today as being included, that field survey. I'd like to ask Commissioner Holder's question. Commissioner, on, on this particular project, I'm not very, I don't know all the details, but I could probably safely say that out of if the project incorporates 400 acres, there's part of it that absolutely would require a field run survey to do adequate design. There's parts of it that you would not need that detailed as information, <clears throat> and that part certainly could come from an aerial topo. So I would think you would be looking for a combination of both on this project. I mean, obviously, the runway is where you folks swear you're going to have to have the field run with the one foot, two foot, whatever sections. Well, that that would be your ground run survey, obviously, right. because you know if you just think about a runway, it needs to be extremely accurate and flat. Absolutely. Your 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 aerial photography will not supply that kind of accuracy. It will require a ground run topo and other issues that are. Uh, were the details that necessary to get a good design, they should do a field run topo. If you're just looking at clearances and those elevations are, you know, within a foot or two or adequate, then you would do your, you know, your aerial photography. So I don't anticipate that neither one of them are probably doing a field run topo on all 400 acres. Oh, They're probably doing so. both. Just on the effect there. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? On this item, I just Mr. Foy. Go ahead. I just want to clarify, and and, and again, uh, to what was stated, you know, we are running field run survey on the runway and the runway extensions, and and uh, just uh, our part of our scope it says these surveys include uh, photographic mapping of 400 acres, phase one and two of the runway extensions, but we will establish survey controls during construction. Uh, Tying the existing datum to the existing uh, PACS, SCAS monuments. This is getting into field plane. Uh, but this for a field location of all property corners, establishing all ground control, and field locating all any features in the runway and, and uh, parallel taxiway extension projects. So it was always our intent to do field run survey as it relates to the runway and the taxiway. Uh, but the broader, as was stated, the broader 400 acres we would utilize. Aerial photo mapping. Uh, the comment was also made recently. Was, I, I forgot who made it, but it was a reference that it's just a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand relates to the county's portion being ten percent and changing vendors, local vendors cut out for the ten percent. Please understand that GDOT is only going to approve what they approve, and the approval only approval they gave was on the second one after it was changed to Croy. They had not signed off on on um, LPAs, and that again is the monies that GDOT has got to grant. And as I indicated from uh, the email I received from uh, GDOT where they said that they concur with the hours and scope and it is eligible for grant is exactly what, what I have here that, uh, again, as to why I'm bringing this forward to the board for approval. Any other questions or comments? All right, this item will be on the agenda for tomorrow's meeting uh, for some action. If you have any additional questions or comments or um, concerns, I would encourage you to get with Mr. Arletta between now and then and uh, have that discussion. And
I'm going to ask, too, if anyone else signed up for public comment. No. All right, Mr. County Manager, anything else for public session? No, ma'am. Ms. County Attorney? No, ma'am. Upcoming meetings and events. Tomorrow, July the 3rd at 9 a.m., we do have a regular board meeting. Wednesday, July 4th, all county offices will be closed in observance of Independence Day. Monday, July 16th at 9 a.m. and Tuesday, July 17th at 6.30 p.m., we have regular board meetings. At this time, I do need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel, or land acquisition matters. Motion by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Staney. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Okay. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. Motion by Mr. Samia, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. I need a motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. If there's no further business to come before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Preston. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. We stand adjourned.